What's up everyone? Welcome to Hustle is for Life Motivation. This is the channel where you come every single week to find out what it takes to create holistic success in your life. Let me ask you, have you ever had a passion, a dream that you really wanted to pursue? But for some reason, you gave up. You stopped. Something happened. Somebody said something to you. Maybe it was your parents, your family, your friends. Somebody said something or something happened in your life and you stopped and instead you settled. You settled for something less. Has that ever happened to you? If so, then today's show is gonna be all about how you go and pursue your passions, connect with your true purpose, and achieve your dreams. My guest tonight is absolutely phenomenal. Now, I'm gonna butcher his name, I know. Uh, I, and I apologize in advance, my friend. Uh, this is, this is I, I, my pronunciation is rubbish, okay? But uh, I'm gonna do my best. So, his name is Samba Shoot. That was actually pretty good. Yeah, that pretty good. no, that's yeah, that was pretty good. The oh, original cool. way to say it, the Dutch way, is schutter, but I'm not gonna make you, you know, spit this late at night. So uh, <laughs> it's it's schutter, but in America, in America, they say shoot. So actually, you did it right. So samba shoot. Oh, thanks, man. I, that, that's that's pretty cool. I, I feel I feel relieved. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, Samba is absolutely amazing, man. I mean, uh, he's an actor. He's a comedian. That's how he started off his career as a stand-up comedian in Holland. He then moved to LA. He's got an amazing origin stories. He's done so many different projects. He's been in movies, in video games, in TV shows. Right now, what you want to do is go on to Netflix and check out The Tiger Hunter. And also, go on Amazon and is it Sony Digital? Sony Digital, I believe. And check out yeah. Destined to Ride. Those are the two movies you want to check out right now. It's Samba Shoot. He's here and he's going to tell us all about how you can pursue your dreams, connect with your true purpose, and find your true passion. So with that, Samba, welcome to the show, man. Thank you, brother. Happy to be here. Happy to talk to you. I'm glad we matched colors today. <laughs> yeah, it looks like we just we, we kind of caught each other before, and, and you know. Just... Like, what, you're wearing purple? Yes, I'm wearing purple. Yeah, too. We're, Great. We're wearing purple. Yeah, exactly. This, this. No, happy to be here. <laughs> glad to have you on, brother. And just to clarify, that did not happen. We did not. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and also, just to let you know, guys, this uh, video recording format is a little bit different because we're using a different platform for this call, not our usual platform. Um, so, yeah, that's why you will see me kind of tiny in a corner somewhere. And obviously, Samba, who's the guest of the hour here in uh, in, in full cinema. Zoom full screen. Mode. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, um, awesome, man. So, Samba, um, take us back in time. Let's go down memory lane. Um, I know you started off your career in Holland as a comedian, as a stand-up comedian. So talk, talk to us a little bit about what led you into this direction of pursuing your dream to become a stand-up comedian and an actor um, and, and achieve all these amazing things. Uh, well, to be, to be honest, um, when I think back about where it began, I think it began with my parents uh, because uh, my mother is African. She's from Mauritania, which is in West Africa in the Sahara Desert. And my father is Dutch. And so what you had was a strong black Muslim woman and a tall Christian man who met and decided to have children who looked Indian. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they had me. I was born in Mauritania. And then we all moved with my family to Ethiopia because my dad had to work there. And that's where I grew up. So Ethiopia is really where I had my childhood. I went to school there. Um, but because I was so diverse... Uh, from different backgrounds, immediately I noticed I was not fitting in with the other kids at school and with basically what their story was because everyone had a basic home, had roots. And I could say, you know, well, my roots are both in Mauritania and in Holland. And so when I went to Holland, I didn't feel like I was Dutch. And when I went to Mauritania, I didn't feel like I was Mauritanian because of my appearance and, and, and my background. So my whole life, I was an outsider. And uh, as a kid, of course, you're like, why don't I belong? You know, I just want to be, you know, like everybody. I want to have friends. But, you know, fast forward to the future, I, it was a blessing because being an outsider as a kid helped me observe so many things mm. and so many patterns. And to compensate for that as a, as a child, usually you become the clown in the classroom. 
And so I was very much the class clown when I was growing up, just to fit in, to make people laugh, showed them that I belong, that I'm you know part of the group, that I don't have to be bullied because I'm different. And that's where it really started. But I did not know I wanted to become a stand-up comedian. I did not know that. I just knew I liked to make people laugh. So when I left Ethiopia when I was 18 and moved to Holland, uh, I went to a college there. I, I wanted to study theater because I knew I wanted to become an actor. And then one night they had an open mic night, and uh, I decided to make a, write a funny monologue as an actor. And I went on the stage, and they had a microphone, and I started doing my monologue. And people were laughing and laughing and laughing. And at the end of the show, people were like, oh, my God, you're an amazing stand-up comedian. <clears throat> And I was like, oh, wait, wait, I'm not a stand-up comedian. I'm an, I'm an actor. What I didn't know what stand-up comedy was because I didn't, I didn't read about it. I didn't study it. So I went on, you know, Shazam. I think it was not Shazam. What was it? Kazam back in those days where you can type in a video and then you find videos before YouTube. And that's where I saw Eddie Murphy and, you know, Bill Cosby and Richard Pryor and Robin Williams and Jim Carrey and all these stand-up comedians. And I saw what they were doing. And I'm like... This is what I love to do. This is what I want to do. I want to make people laugh telling my stories as a career <laughs> and get paid for it. Uh, so basically that's where I started doing more stand-up comedy and started to perform in different clubs in Holland, like different bars and restaurants. And then in 2006, when I was 23, I took part in the biggest national comedy competition. Uh, and... I did a show about my cultural roots, you know, being from two worlds, and that went down very well because it was at a time in Europe where, you know, it was right after 9-11 and people were very much, you know, against multiculturalism and against, you know, Muslims and everything. And in my show, I talked about how very similar we are instead of different and that our differences can make us richer if we learn from one another. Yeah. And that went down very well, and I won the competition. I won both the jury and the audience awards, and that kick-started my career as wow. a comedian. That's a comedian. Amazing. Yeah, so that's, that's how it began. <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, it's such an incredible story, Ben, and uh, I, I can kind of relate to that because uh, in a slightly different way. My, my parents, they were um, from... from you know that they were Asian, uh, but they were different, different, different parts. And mm. uh, then, you know, I, I, they, they were actually from Pakistan. So my parents are from Pakistan. Uh, okay. I wasn't born there. I was born in the Middle East, and you know, because uh, they were there at the time, and then moved to Pakistan for a bit, and then came over to Europe, and it, it just like you know, it's like you know, kind of like global hop. Yeah. situation going on with me um, so yeah. yeah I mean I went to an international school picked up an American accent and uh, you know <laughs> everybody like here in the UK is like oh you're American no dude never yeah. been to America <laughs> I just, just watch a lot to, of movies <laughs> yeah watch a lot of movies and went to an international school because like that's, yeah. that's what happened you know so yeah, uh, yeah I, I can kind of relate to that but what an awesome story man um, and you talk about being an outsider and I think um, a lot of the times you know all of us there have been times where all of us feel like that right like yeah. you know to the audience I, I I'm gonna turn turn to you guys and ask you the question how many times in your life have you felt like an outsider and you know what what kind of alienation did you feel at that point how lonely was that when you felt as an outsider but the question then is then, did you take charge? Did you try and fit in? And what strategies did you use to successfully do that? I mean, Samba talked about how he, you know, used humor. Um, and that actually turned out to be something that he, he, he got to work in as a career later on. How, how awesome is that? But, you know, how many times have we felt as an outsider, um, but we, we've just kind of let, kind of let the control go? So we've not really taken charge of the situation. Um, so Samba, I mean, I, what you did was really inspiring, man. I mean, you took charge Thank of the you. situation, you went and, you know, you, 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 you fit it in and now you're really successful. So that's awesome, man. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, people, thank you, but people who are outsiders, uh, you know, they, they are forced to or pressurized to fit the mold. You know, like you have to be a certain way, especially in Holland, this is the case. The Dutch people have an expression that literally says, don't stick your head out in the crowd or it'll be chopped off. Oh, so right. wow. basically everyone is very, you know, rigid, do your thing, but don't stand out too much because then that's against the culture or whatever. 
And I didn't like that because what it basically says is be like everyone else mm. or you'll be an outsider. And, and we're not like everyone else, you know. Um, so we are very pressurized to fit the mold or be a certain way. But more and more what I see happening, and I'm so glad it's happening, is that people are creating their own molds. And that's the way to go. You know, like this is not what I fit in, so I'm going to create what I do fit in and what I'm comfortable in. And then you'll find that there are people who you attract who are that as well. So dare to step out of how you're told to be and really just feel free to express what you feel you are and who you feel you are. Because that's the only way to, to really feel good about yourself in your life and to contribute to life. Because we are very diverse as people and the only way to enrich ourselves is by everyone being themselves. That is so interesting that you say that simply because if you are, if you feel like an outsider and and you try to you know stand out and create an environment where you can be comfortable where you can express yourself openly etc i think most likely you will find is that people join you because you're probably not the only one who's feeling as an outsider there are lots of other people who are also feeling the same they just yeah. don't know what to do they just, they no. they're just kind of like not sure you know how you actually take control of the situation and maybe you are the one who spark that that sort of uh, you know put things into motion where you all come together and, and you form yeah. that community uh, and, and you might be labeled as outsiders by everybody else but hey that's 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 who you are right like that's your environment yeah. that's that's your community so I think that's really powerful I love that no thank you and that's the truth and that's what's happening and, and I'm glad to see that happen more and more in media as well because I work in the entertainment industry yeah and the more we see those figures represented on TV shows or films and, and, and other media platforms, the more inspired you say, uh, like you said, we are to come out and to, to actually be like, yeah, finally, that's, that's who I feel I am. That's how I associate. And um, so, yeah, you, you need those trendsetters. So anyone who's bold enough to do that, you know, kudos to you and all those who are daring to do it. You know, the, you have nothing to lose. That's my motto. Mm. You never have anything to lose um, by trying. I mean, <clears throat> the worst part of my journey is rejection, you know, uh, and, and and that's what we get every day on a daily basis as artists and entertainers, uh, people who say no or people who don't like what you're doing. And that's that's a ritual. It's part of the journey. And, and you're going to face it all the time, just like people who say no. But how you deal with it is is what matters and how you stay true to yourself. And so, yeah, no at the end of the day is just a word. Uh, and and you're going to hear it and if you accept that you hear it, it's okay just trust that eventually a door will open and um, that's finally something that happened for me when I managed to move to Los Angeles in 2011 because I was, I was really motivated to, even though my career was going great in Holland, I wanted to work in English, I wanted to work in the biggest market you know, in the world and so I, my eyes were set on Los Angeles but I had no idea how that would work out and I just kept trying and trying and finally I got a visa, a work visa to come here and, and I was able to give it a shot. Mm, yeah, and I think that's, that's the key thing you mentioned there, isn't it? You didn't give up, you didn't stop, you kept trying. Right. Yeah. yeah. Guys, make sure that you subscribe to the channel because guess what? The channel competition I've decided I'm going to run every single month. So what that means is that if you go and hit that subscribe button down below and leave a comment anywhere on any video on the channel, it doesn't matter what video it is, and I get a notification, you automatically get entered into the channel competition. And at the end of the month, well, the start of the next month, I will announce the winner and the winner will get free access to my new networking strategies course. These are the strategies that I have used to connect and build relationships with amazing people all over the world and bring them onto my YouTube channel to interview and to add value to them. Yeah, yeah, and then that's the thing because if you have a dream, first of all, anyone who's pursuing a passion, big up to you mm. because that's the hardest thing you're ever going to do in your life, <laughs> you know? Because oh, yeah. I have so many friends. I went to an international school too and I have so many friends who wanted to become archaeologists and, and musicians or wanted to be an astronaut and all their families were like, no, you're going to take over the family business. You're going to, you know, you can't be creative. You have to be a lawyer because that's the, you have to be a doctor because that's the, that's the thing, that's stability. And so their dreams were crushed. Mm and their passions taken away from them by, by their families. And that's a sad thing. I know there's pressures that people want their 
kids to do well, but also encourage them to do well and be happy with what they do. Because if you're happy with what you're doing, you're going to do well. Mm. You know, if, if your yeah. greatest potential is to be a janitor, that's your greatest potential. If you do it well, you're going to be the best damn janitor on this planet. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and you're going to be happy doing what you're doing. So just follow your passion. It's the hardest thing that will, that will ever happen. But dare to take that first step because, like I said, uh, you have nothing to lose. Uh, if you really look back at your life, if you really look at the journey, if you think back at all the things that happened in your life, you will realize everything has always worked out for you. Mm. Everything has always worked out for you. And so if you have that faith and that knowledge, step forward and trust that it's going to keep working out for you. Mm. Uh, and that's the hardest thing, but do it. And, you know, and, and don't give up, like you say. That's that's the biggest secret, I think, to fulfilling your dreams is keep it up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so powerful. Guys, if you have a passion, what are what are you thinking when you're trying to pursue the passion? Or what are your what are your behavior patterns when adversity arises in your life because when you're pursuing your passion like Samba said you are going to face adversity there's going to be hard times but if you have a pattern in your life that every single time you face adversity you give up you step back you let go then yeah things things are gonna get hard and they're not gonna work out for you but if you really want to live the life that you want of fulfillment of happiness of freedom of joy then you need to pursue that passion and like samba said you got nothing to lose because when you look back you will see that life happened for you not to you but it's so hard to see that in the moment absolutely isn't that right samba like when you're going through absolutely. the journey it's so hard to see that but in hindsight when it's 2020 it's always in hindsight. <laughs> and so the trick is to try and be present with it um, and trust trust it in the moment. Of course, I've had auditions that I thought the role is perfect for this movie. Like, um, I, what was it? It was for Captain Phillips, that movie with Tom Hanks. I got to audition as one of the Somalian pirates. Oh, wow. And, and I was like, this is perfect because I love Tom Hanks, you know, and I just, I auditioned and I, I was so close and then at the end of the day, they said, I'm so sorry, you don't look African enough. <laughs> and, and I was like, what does that mean? I'm African. And they're like, I'm so sorry, you don't look African enough. And so that was just heartbreaking that, that I was so close to something and then didn't get it. But at the end of the day, uh, I had to trust that it was for the best, you know, for not only for me, but for the project in general and for everything. Because I'm so glad at the end of the day, they cast an actual Somalian uh, guy, Barkat Abdi. And what that did was that it opened doors for uh, Hollywood to demand for authentic actors mm. to play authentic roles. And that's what kind of kickstarted it. Because once people saw, oh my God, if you actually have someone from that place playing that role instead of someone else because of their name or whatever, it adds so much dimension to the story and it actually makes it so much real and inspires others. Now there's Somalian actors now out there who are like, my dream is to be an actor. Mm. And now there's one of us on our TV screen, which means that we can actually do it. Yeah. Now they're pursuing their dreams. Mm. So as hard as rejection is, as hard as you hear no, you have to be have faith that it's part of what is best for not only you, but for what you are pursuing at the end of the day as well. Mm. Because now, when I'm auditioning for a role and I know I'm authentic for it, the chances are very high that I get it. And that's what's happened with the Tiger Hunter, with other roles I've played, um, thanks to, in part, that movie. So, so yes, no is going to happen. Be tough-skinned because, you know, pursuing your passion, people are going to try to break you down. People are going to try to take advantage of you. People are going to try to demoralize you. But find out why you are pursuing that passion. What is it about doing this that brings you such joy? Is it, you know, what's your motivation? Is it money? Is it fame? Is it success? Or is it deeper than that? Is it doing justice to your inner child? Doing justice to your 
passion to you know entertain tell stories make people laugh once you connect to that nothing can derail you from from your track oh i love that oh i absolutely love that Thanks. you mentioned a, like being thick-skinned and dealing with rejection yeah. and having faith and trusting that things will work out because in the past things in the end have worked out not in the moment but yeah. in the end they did work out yeah but for a lot of people it's really difficult to see well how, you know dealing with that rejection again and again and again and it can actually for some people it can be absolutely crushing they, it can crush them yeah. so I, I guess the real question is here do you think that dealing with rejection is that to do with just having faith or is that more to do with practice is, is the is the mindset that you develop around what rejection really means like for example you've right. heard of the law of averages like like the more no's you get the closer you are to getting a yes right so is it yeah. having that kind of mindset or is it more faith based where you're just like hey things worked out in the past so if i just keep going and if i just never ever stop then they will just work out in the end so which one is it I think it's both. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think it's both because for me, when because I'm thinking about my my example, because that's the clearest one I have. For me, it's it, it it's faith based in the sense that I trust it happens for a reason, mm. and that I trust that I'm being guided to what is actually best for me, and that what is right for me will come to me, and what belongs to me will come to me. Uh, because that's been the journey of my of my life, you know. The the times I've heard no has put me on another path, and at the end of the day, that path was actually better than what would have happened if I had stayed on that path. Mm. And so for me, it's a very much an internal compass of okay, I didn't get this part, I didn't succeed in there, I heard a big no for this, but just gather myself and have faith that that no means that this is the way to go. And when I think back, like I said you realize everything has always worked out for me. So by doing that, the other path, you know, was better for me at the end of the day because I learned something or I experienced something that will help me become an even better, stronger artist and achieve what I really want to achieve. So it, for me, it's very faith-based, but at the same time, it's a practical thing. It's just, you know, it's just the law of probability <laughs> and and just being with that mindset of no there's going to be people who don't like what you do there's going to be people who don't like what you're selling there's going to be people who don't like what you have to offer but that's not everybody and there are people who are will connect to you because that's just how diverse we are on this planet so just keep keep like i, I use the example of sylvester stallone who was pitching the movie rocky you know he wrote Rocky, and then he went to 100 people. And they all said no. But he kept going. For some reason, he's like, someone's going to say yes. And at the end of the day, yes, the next one said yes. But if he had given up at number 20, you know, he wouldn't be who he is today. Mm. So what kept him going? Probably just that he knew he had something to offer. Just like, I know I have something to offer. And eventually, you're going to find the right people who like what you have to offer. But on the downside of that, it does not mean you, you should be ignorant because there are some people, yes, who hear no, uh, but that's usually someone telling them they have to work on something or they're not there yet. So be open to learning, be open-minded to why you hear the no and see what you can get out of it. Not to stop pursuing your dreams, but why was there a no and what can I do to actually improve areas of myself mm. So I can get a yes next time. Uh, so does, don't just go blindly knocking on the next door with the same kind of intention and motivation. But see if there is something in there where you're like, oh, okay, I need to develop this aspect of myself. For example, as an actor, I knew I had to develop my American accent because I have this weird transatlantic accent. And I knew, oh, to get more roles, I have to sound more American because then they're more comfortable and then they'll cast me. So... When I'd hear no, it's like, what can I do better? Mm. So, uh, oh, do I have to take an acting class for camera acting specifically? Or do I have to work on my dialects? Or do I have to train myself so I know how I come across in auditions? Do I have this desperate energy around me? Do I have to change it to more uh, f a being of service energy? Uh, all those little things you learn from the no's. So don't just go blindly and have faith that it's going to work out without 
growing at the same time and developing yourself at the same time. Mm, that is such a beautiful, beautiful answer. I love it. And Thank you. You're, uh, you're absolutely right. It, it is making sure that you you kind of reflect on your own performance. It's like, hey, is there room to grow? Is there something else that I can be working on? Is there something else that I can do better? Right? Yeah. Because you, you probably will find something, but if you work on all those things, right, then your chances of success next time actually improves, right? Like, so, because, because yeah, you've identified the one weak area and you've been working at it. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I, I love that advice. That's beautiful. Um, and for people in the audience, I'm wondering how many Rocky fans are out there right now. Samba, are you a Rocky fan? Uh, yeah, man, come on. <laughs> you know, we, we had the bootleg copy uh, in Ethiopia. You know, the ones where people are in a movie theater filming with their yeah. camera and then there's a guy standing up or people coughing or whatever. That's the one we watched when we were kids. Oh, wow. <laughs> but, yeah, loved it. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's a, I, since we're talking about Rocky, there's an amazing Rocky quote uh, that says, it doesn't matter how hard you can hit. What matters is how hard you can get hit and still get up. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, and yeah. I think it ties Basically. so nicely with what you've said. That's everything I've been saying, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. In one sentence. In one sentence. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. such a beautiful chord. I love it. It's like it doesn't yeah. doesn't matter how hard you can hit. What matters is how hard you can get hit and still get yeah. up. And, and that's yeah, that's beautiful. I love that. That's why, and I think it connects to what's your motivation. Because if you remember why you're doing what you're doing, it's easier to get up. Mm. Um, for example, I had to set a goal early on. Like my goal is not to be rich or famous because that's that's not an end goal mm. uh, you have to have an end goal so rich and famous doesn't what does it mean you know what can you the goal is what can you do with that mm. so my goal was to be have enough exposure in my career so that my message of multiculturality diversity inclusion and being of service to people giving opportunities to to people who who don't have the means to, even though they have a dream to pursue them, give those guys a chance and attention. And so when I know that that's my motivation, it comes from a way deeper place. That I know that I'm not just dreaming of, you know, getting getting the Oscar. It's about <laughs> it's about getting, uh, why do I want that? Or why does that help my journey to motivate, you know, to, from the end goal to support diversity and show people that you can pursue your dreams, you can make your dreams come true. And so that's why I get up when I get knocked down, because I remember that. And so I think it's really important to set yourself a reminder of why you are pursuing a goal mm. and not just have money or fame as the end goal, because that's not tangible. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, so what I'm hearing you say there, Sandra, is the fact that if you want to be able to deal with rejection, if you want to pursue your dreams and get past the adversity and make sure that you live the life that you want to live of freedom, of joy, of happiness and being just feeling fulfilled from what you do, then yeah. what you what you really have to do um, is to make sure that you connect you connect yourself to a bigger purpose than yourself. Yeah, I think I think that's key. Mm. It's amazing how life works. Uh, the old adage of you know, uh, he who gives receives. You know, uh, it's it's not been taught for thousands and thousands of years just for nothing. It actually makes sense. Yeah. And so, if you have the mentality of I would like to be of service to something by doing what I'm doing. It's amazing how life rewards you for that. I'm not saying be selfish in the sense of, oh, if I give one dollar to this homeless man, then yeah, <laughs> the universe is going to give me something. No, <laughs> yeah. that's not what I mean, because then your motivation is in the wrong place. Yeah, It's about truly, for me as an artist, how can I be of service is to really be a full expression of who I am, mm. standing true, staying true to my cultural roots, what I represent, and wanting my art to go beyond just you know getting money and 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 being paid for it, but going going truly beyond that and really helping inspire people, and and share a message of unity. Um, and so when you are being of service in the sense of why you're doing something, it has to be connected to something that will benefit others as well. 
mm. and not just yourself. You know, it's, it's the balance between selfishness and selflessness. Selfish in the sense that you're the one doing what you're doing, but selfless in the sense of I'm doing this because I want others to do well in their lives. Yeah. I want others yeah. to be better off. I want others to benefit from my dreams, from my passions, from my work. I think when you connect to that, it is true. You you get you give you receive what you give. Mm. I think so. And so and so yeah, it's bigger than yourself. It has to be bigger than yourself. Oh man, that's oh, man. amazing. <laughs> and for people in the audience, what's your true purpose? Samba just shared with us his true purpose, which is to spread the message of multiculturalism and to to be of service to others. What's your true purpose? And if you don't know your true purpose, then maybe that should be your purpose, to find your true purpose. Because like Samba said, he shared his, his story with us and, and it, it, it clearly highlights the one thing that if you connect yourself to your true purpose, which is bigger than yourself, it has to be bigger than yourself, then you will have the, the, the sort of, kind of inner, inner power to go and pursue your dreams despite rejection, di despite adversity, despite negativity, you can overcome those things. But you need to have that inner fire, that inner fuel that keeps you going. And what's that? That's your true purpose. That's your why. Why are you pursuing your dreams? Why are you pursuing your passions? So powerful. So Samba, I mean, at the end of the day, what advice do you have for people who actually do want to pursue their passions, pursue their dreams, and they are experiencing the same sort of stuff that you talked about where their family, their friends, their parents, they are telling them actually, no, you need to have something that is more traditional. You need to follow the path that is more sort of secure and brings you that security in, in your life and in your long, uh, long-term success. Yeah. It ensures that. Um, but they, they, they still are hungry. They're unfulfilled. They're unhappy. Yeah they don't want to settle. They don't want it, yeah. but they don't see any other way. They don't know what to do. They don't know where to go. So what advice do you have for those people? Well, <clears throat> that's a very deep question. <laughs> <laughs> but um, from my experience, if, you're, if you have a job and you're not happy at your job, you will lose it mm. by, by nature. Because the universe is very in tune with your intentions and who you are being. And so if you have a job and it's paying you well, but every day you're going, oh my God, I have to go to work again, da, 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 da. eventually you're going to get fired or the company is going to dissolve or whatever and you're just going to be, you're going to lose that job. And so that's why it's so important to find the joy in what you are doing mm -hmm. and why you're doing something. Yes, parents and family will tell you no because it comes from a place of protection. They really want you to be well off in your life because maybe they've worked really hard in their lives and they don't want to see you struggle so it comes from a place of protection so I understand that parents will say no to for example you know uh, someone from Ethiopia who wants to become an actor uh, because they're like no just work you know as a lawyer and you'll get money but at the end of the day what I've seen happen is that parents want you to be happy as much as they want you to be safe and they are saying this because they want to protect you at the end of the day they want to see you happy because the worst thing for a parent is to see their child yeah he's a lawyer he's an amazing lawyer he's doing well but every day he's you know drinking because he's depressed and he's not happy with himself that's that's what will happen so so at the end of the day the, your parents will always want you to be happy so it's hard but don't worry about them because it's your life so follow your heart uh, and as cliche as that sounds it's the truth because really get in touch with what it is you want to do with, with your life. Mm. If everything was possible, what would you be doing right now? Mm. And that's where you have to begin. Because that's the secret, is the, to have that attitude that everything is possible. But you have to start with, if everything was possible, if there was no rejection in the world, if there was just a clear highway for me to fulfill my greatest potential, what would I be doing right now? And that's how you connect to your passion. And then start taking the steps to pursue it. It's not going to happen overnight. That's the thing you have to realize. It's not something that happens overnight. But when you take the steps 
to find a way to pursue it. You know, there's there's so many ways going to a certain school to study something, you know, g- g- taking classes, finding a community that does that to support that, to start taking the steps towards that journey. Doors will open up because the the universe is your biggest fan when you are following your heart. That's when it's like, finally, yes, someone was playing their music. Boom, let's open these doors, let's open these doors, let's open these doors because they're flowing with life. They're flowing with their purpose. And when you flow with your purpose, things will always work out for you. So don't be afraid to take that leap of faith, as scary as it is, because security at the end of the day, what is it? It's just security. Yes, it's security, but without taking that leap, You'll never know what you're capable of and what you really have to offer to this world. And the universe and the world is waiting for you to offer the best version of yourself. Mm. That's why you're here. That's why you're here. Mm. So don't be afraid to take that leap. It takes a lot of courage. But when you do, trust me that it will all work out for you. Yeah, and and your answer, Samba, reminds me of a quote that says, Why play safe in a life where no one gets out alive? (laughs) I like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Basic. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Basically uh, you know, what was it? Anthony Hopkins said once, uh, "Mighty, you know, <sighs> mighty are the bold because great forces will come to their aid." Mm. And that's that's the truth. You know, just be bold, and 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 when you are, mighty forces will come to your aid. They will open the doors for you. Um. <clears throat> yeah. So that's that's really my motto, and that's what I always keep telling people: just be positive. If you're not happy with something, the only person who can fix it is yourself, mm. and you have to take that step. Or if you are really unhappy with your job, but you don't see yourself doing anything else in, else in life, find a way to change your mentality to appreciate the job you're doing, and then great things will happen for you in that job or with what you're doing. But if you are totally complaining and unhappy and feel blocked and, and stuck, that's what will keep happening if you keep doing that. That feeling will keep being created because that's what you're feeling in yourself and that's what you're attracting to yourself. So um, find that thing that brings you joy and do it. Even if it's just like, I can't be an artist, I'm a mom, I have a kid, I, have to, I need to support my family, then take painting classes in the weekend that will help you to express that joy. You know, Find that thing that will make you happy because it will make yeah it will open doors for you and possibilities for you that that you never imagined yeah and i think the advice you gave earlier was was absolutely spot on and also the fact that you know you don't you you just have to try and make like you said your parents just want you to be happy so you can just try and make them understand that what yeah. really makes you happy rather than actually becoming a lawyer and then being depressed and like being on uh, antidepressants and, and like you said, yeah. going, drinking or whatever. Um, just make them understand what really makes you happy. But at the same time, I think there is some wisdom to that advice. I mean, look at me, I have a full-time job and I'm actually a maths lecturer, but uh, you know, on the side, I'm, 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 I'm doing this and this is something that's my passion. So there is wisdom in that advice, you know, have that there security, yeah. but there's no reason why you can't pursue your passions, can't pursue your dreams. Hey, in the part-time, on the side, until you build it up to a point where you can go and do it full time. Um, that's what I'm doing right now, right? Like yeah. your journey is where you went all in. And in my case, that didn't work out. So I went the traditional way and then on the side yeah. of working on this and, and developing it on the side. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully it'll, it'll, it'll be, easy, you know, something. I know. It's so inspiring to see. And I, I hope it really inspires your followers and other people to to see that it is, a, it is possible to find a balance. Mm. It, it doesn't have to be all in. Yeah. That really depends on when you know that there's nothing else you can do in this life but be an actor or a comedian. For me, that's the case right now. And so I'm all in. Yeah. <laughs> but for other people, it doesn't have to be all in. It can be, I would love to experience this. So find a way to balance it with your current life. And, and you know, you're showing people that it is possible. Yeah. Absolutely. Exactly. Um, you know? and, and, and it's, uh, I think it, 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 the advice serves a purpose for certain people at a certain time. I think you're absolutely right there because some people just say, no, you have to go all in or no, you, you can't go all in. It's not, it, it, it's too risky uh, and you have to follow the traditional path only, whatever. But I think yeah. you, there is wisdom to the fact that you, you can just build something on the side and then, you know, that, yeah. that's, that's totally fine as well. Anyway, this yeah. has been absolutely phenomenal, Samba. Uh, the time restricts us. So before we kind of, uh, you know, close off, just very quickly, how can people reach out to you and where can they find you? 
So this has been fantastic. Thank you so much. People can reach out to me through Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. It's all my name, Samba Schutte, <laughs> <laughs> or Shoot, Samba Shoot. And I'm, I'm always available to answer questions or to help people support their dreams. And so please stay in touch and uh, be the star that you are. Love it. And guys, I'll put all those links below in the description for you so you can reach out to Samba straight away. I will highly encourage you to do so uh, because he has lived, lived it, right? He's lived and he's walked the path. So if you have any questions on any of the things that we've talked about today or more, then uh, Samba is the person to go to because he has actually walked the path. He's bought the t-shirt. So the advice he will give you is going to be absolute gold. With that, I will just say thank you so much for spending this time with me. As always, I really, really appreciate it. So make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and subscribe to the channel because when you subscribe, not only will you get all the future episodes landing in your inbox, but also you get entered in the channel competition, which on the 1st of October 2018, I will announce the winner who will get access, free access to my new course on networking strategies that I have used to find, build, and maintain relationships with some of the most successful people in the world. So if you want to enter the competition, hit the subscribe button and comment on any video. I want to see the subscribe notification and I want to see the comment notification. Other than that, share this video with somebody who you think can benefit. And this is the biggest compliment you can pay me in Samba right now. Just share it. Just share the message. We're here to inspire and impact as many lives as we can. This is what we do. This is why we're here. Um, so uh, the biggest compliment you can give us is just share. So if you found any golden nuggets in this conversation, then just pay it forward. Just share it with somebody else. Other than that, guys, stay awesome, hustle hard, and I will catch you in the next one.